Welcome to Tech Photo Blog. This is episode number 75. This week I'm going to be doing a deep dive on the air gap flash and specifically the reflector portion of the air gap flash. So before I get into that, I know a lot of people are wondering if I'm going to be able to sell these flashes or not. Uh, the answer to that is that it's still unsure. I, I have one lead that I'm hoping will pan out and they'll be able to sell these for me, but um, it's not a done deal yet, so I'm just going to have to ask people to, to keep waiting while I keep working on that portion of it. However, uh, in this episode, we'll be talking about the air gap flash for those people who want to make their own. I'll, I'll talk a little bit about how um, I've improved the reflector uh, design on my my air gap flash and maybe other people can take some of these ideas if if they are building their own. So what got me looking into the reflector on the air gap flash was that I had these sporadic triggers on the air gap only when the camera axe was attached. So to debug this I hit, hooked up an oscilloscope to the air gap uh, flash's cable going to the camera axe and what I saw was Every once in a while there would be this spike up to about 50 volts. Now the opto isolator in the camera axe isolates um, high voltage from the rest of the system so the camera axe itself was safe. However the opto isolator's output circuit um, is only rated to 36 volts. So this 50 volts was exceeding that and was basically causing the opto isolator itself to uh, have an extra trigger uh, when this high voltage was detected and that's why it only happened when the camera axe was attached and uh, basically what I had to do was find the source of these high voltage spikes and uh, eliminate it from the system. So uh, here's an old reflector design and basically what it is is it's uh, reflective acrylic and uh, or, or mirror acrylic and um, you can see on this side it's very shiny uh, it's basically a mirror on one side of the acrylic on the other side of the acrylic it's this flat gray uh, and I thought you know this is exactly what I need for a reflector it's the perfect substance but basically what I found out was this acrylic paint that they put on one side um, is conductive and uh, having a big conductive plane inside the air gap at a place where I didn't want a conductive plane was a bad thing and it was basically causing um, a corona effect from um, corners of the uh, reflective paint to the uh, uh, case and then that voltage spike was traveling through the ground signal getting into the camera act. so uh, that's where it was coming from and I could actually visually see that once I knew what to look for and and started looking around in in the dark and I could visually confirm that another problem with this reflective paint is you can kinda of see it right there a little bit but it, it sort of flakes off in the uh, presence of high voltage uh, so it actually breaks down and loses the reflective paint and it's not reflective so basically while it seemed like an ideal solution uh, the reflective acrylic or mirror acrylic just wasn't going to cut it. So I had to come up with a new solution. I tried a bunch of different things. Um, the first one I tried was these reflective stickers, which I tried a couple of different brands. I found big rolls of this stuff on Amazon. It's really cheap. Um, I thought this would be good, but uh, it's conductive again. <laughs> so uh, at least the two types I tried were both conductive. And also, it breaks down in the presence of high voltage. So I think you might be able to find a non-conductive reflective sticker maybe, but I, I think the plastic is probably going to always break down. Um, it's just not what it's designed for. So uh, I gave up on this plan, and I thought, tin foil. Now, I know tin foil is conductive, but I thought I could put it in a place on the air gap flash um, where it wouldn't conduct anything like I, I knew it was going to be super conductive but I could maybe put it in the reflector in a way that uh, would you know not be a problem but basically there wasn't enough space and I got these pinhole pricks where um, the corona would occur um, you're probably not going to see it on the video but um, there's these little holes in the tinfoil which were vaporized 
when a, a little bit of a voltage uh, hit the tin foil and uh, put a little hole in it. But so so it's not durable enough, and there isn't enough room in the the current air gap flash to put a reflector made out of tin foil in there. So I had to abandon the tin foil. And uh, what I ended up doing was designing a new reflector that just uses pure white acrylic. Now I know uh, acrylic itself is high voltage safe. It's a very good insulator. Um, so I knew that this would work. I just wasn't sure how reflective white acrylic would be. Um, if you hold it up to a light, you can actually see through it. You can sort of see my finger on the other side. I had my doubts, but it actually worked quite well. Um, having the white here instead of a reflective uh, acted as a diffuser um, and kind of made the light much uh, nicer from the air gap flash. Uh, we lost um, about uh, a little less than a stop of light, maybe uh, half a stop of light or so uh, by going to something like this. But um, I bumped up the voltage and the overall output on the air gap flash is now higher than it, than it was. Um, and you can sort of see I used black tape here. I did that instead of gluing the acrylic because I like the idea of being able to take this apart and, and this black electrical tape that I use to hold things together actually holds up well in the presence of high voltage. And I always like being able to take things apart. So uh, I think I'm gonna be using this. It looks a little funny uh, having this black tape hold this reflector together, but it works quite well. And being able to take things apart is, is an advantage in my opinion. So. Um, I think this is the, the new reflector design that I'll be using going forward and uh, I'm really happy with it. It's completely gotten rid of that corona problem that I was talking about. So things are rock solid in the numerous air gap flashes I've, I've been triggering. That was really the last problem I had to solve. However, um, I was not completely satisfied with this working solution so I tried adding a few more things. So the first improvement I tried on the white reflector was to insert some white reflective paper into the white reflector. And I th the idea was this would be more reflective than the white reflector itself and uh, it passed all of the uh, corona type issues. It didn't cause any problems there. The high voltage didn't seem to affect it at all. Uh, I was pretty happy in that respect. However, it didn't really improve the output, which is a little surprising. I'm going to investigate a little bit more maybe in the future, but I didn't really get a significant enough uh, improvement in the light, light output to really go forward with the added complexity of inserting uh, the white reflective paper. So that was kind of an out. Um, you know, it's not something I'm going to probably do on future designs. So the last thing I tried to improve these reflectors is something called a Fresnel lens. Um, so you can kind of see that it's, uh, let's see if we can get something magnified. There's my screwdriver. Anyways, it's magnifying a few things in the background. But basically, uh, what this is, is it's this special lens technology. It's kind of interesting if you look it up on, on Wikipedia, they put sort of this ridged lens design to, to greatly reduce the cost of lenses. This is just a plastic sheet, but it acts as a, it's a pretty powerful lens. And uh, the idea here was um, the current reflector uh, on the air gap flash uh, kind of diffuses light over a large area and what you really want to do is focus it in uh, a lot more than it is today. So I put um, this on the reflect or the, the basically the shield for the camera axis, um, I'm sorry, the shield for the air gap flashes uh, reflector. I have an extra piece of acrylic that I was planning to put a diffuser on but it doesn't really need the diffuser anymore with the white uh, acrylic so instead I could put this Fresnel lens on it and see if that sort of focuses the light a bit more and basically now I'm going to show you some pictures and I'll put these on Flickr as well but uh, that sort of show you what happened to the air gap flash when you attached these Fresnel lens so this first one is just no Fresnel lens and uh, 
you can sort of see things are diffused across there. The uh, <clears throat> air gap flash is about uh, 15 inches away from the paper and the area of the image is actually about three feet wide so you can see that it really does spread out really quickly and what you'd really want ideally is you know at like 18 inches or 15 inches I'd like to, it to only be about uh, you know maybe 15 inches wide I mean most of the time you really want uh, the light from the air gap flash to be a lot more focused than I have it today so um, hopefully these lenses will help and uh, so I attached one lens and this is what I got and uh, basically I think the usable area um, increased uh, light output by about a quarter of a stop and then I tried two Fresnel lenses and I got about a half a stop improvement then just for kicks I flipped the uh, Fresnel lenses around and this is the image I got and uh, it made things a little bit brighter but a little bit more random I'm not exactly sure what's going on there I need to read up on my lens physics a little bit lastly I included uh, the light output from a young new 460 flash now um, I think the loud output from this flash um, this is just a cheap $150 flash uh, using xenon gas it's not you know fast like the air gap flash but the output light output um, is actually better uh, I don't think the output is really much higher it's just more focused because they've got a better lens design probably so this is just there for comparison but I'll put up all four of those images onto my Flickr account so people can go and, and look at them and analyze them more with their own histogram tools if they want so the last thing I wanted to show you was the actual reflector attached to an air gap flash. So the first thing I did was I reversed a bunch of the screws holding the uh, deflector shield uh, on the air gap flash so you can easily unscrew it like that um, and remove or change these shields uh, based without opening up the air gap flash which is a, a nice way of, of working with it and uh, this one has the Fresnel lenses on it uh, but then the actual reflector I did some more changes um, I put on um, some extra cuts of uh, acrylic uh, to sort of better hold the interior components on the air gap flash and uh, this all just sort of holds things together a lot more securely and uh, overall a better design it just took me a few iterations to get there and I'm I'm quite happy with this new design now and uh, lastly I sort of wanted to say that um, you know if people have ideas on how to better improve the uh, lens technology on the air gap flash um, it's not an area I've done a lot of work so I'm kind of reading some things on the internet now and, and seeing if I can come up with a better design going forward but um, you know, if anybody out there has ideas, you know, please share them on the forum or as a comment here, and I'll definitely take a look at them. Thanks for watching.